Yo, what up, people? Spring some motherfucking are here today, of course, to give you guys Kill a Kill episode 5 motherfucking review. And you know what? Kill a Kill, it is still random as shit, and it deviated from the story like a little bit, kind of. But I don't know, I still kind of enjoyed it because we got uh, some good information about this organization that her father worked for. Oh my god. They're called the Nudist Beach. Legit. In this, oh my god, this fucking. Basically, it starts off with some dude on more stuff. I still do not know this nigga's name, but basically, he's a part of, like, the anti, like, what would be the best word? He's against life fibers. Basically, he wants to fucking destroy all the life fiber suits, and he's against it. He, you know, thinks that it's bad, and he's fighting against the power, in a sense. He's a part of this movement, and they're, like, apparently called, like, the nudist speech, and... Oh, my God. This dude, oh, my this dude, this dude, oh, my God. This dude has the weirdest, oh, my God. He's, like, every time he's about to say something, like, you know, that's somewhat important, or, you know, when he's going to say anything at all, really, he says... Let me tell you two things. And I'm just like, oh my god, this dude. Like, ah, it's hilarious. It really was. Oh my god, this dude. And basically, he's gonna fuck up. He's gonna take fresh blood from that bitch. He's gonna, he's, that's his goal. Because he feels that the suit is gonna eventually devour her. And so before another thing like that happens and creates this whole mess all over again, he's just gonna take this bitch's suit and it'll be all done with, and he's got some fucking sniper rifle on the bitch, fucking 50 cal Beretta, just, yeah, fucking giant ass shells, about to shoot this bitch down, and then all of a sudden, the plant club shows up, I'm like, oh, what the fuck, the plant club, what the, the gardening club, and they're like, you treaded our sacred patch of flowers, you mother. I'm like, oh my god, this dude's, and this dude, basically, this dude's, um, Goku uniform, two star, it has the ability that gives him, like, a magical green thumb, in a sense, so he can grow giant-ass fucking, like, Venus fly traps and shit. Mm -mm, but this dude, he don't need no fucking suit. Mm -mm. Nigga got a gun, and it has special bullets in it, like these needles that have a certain type of alloy in them that allows them to separate the connection between fucking, between the suits and the, and the host. Basically, that, that's basically all I can say. And he's just mad, just gunning niggas down with this shit, you know, destroying this fucking giant ass Venus trap and just whooping ass. And then he's gonna fight her because she just gets done like wiping the shit out the floor with this other group of fucking mad scientists. Mom, the science club, like, yeah, whoop the niggas' asses. Of course, they captured Moko. Like, oh, like, uh, uh, I'm so happy that I wasn't dissected because then I wouldn't be able. Oh, my God, fucking Moko. She's my, oh, like, she's my favorite. Oh, my God, this, uh, Moko, uh, I, I, her character is just so random all the time. I'm, I'm enjoying it. But basically, she's happy that she didn't get cut open because then she wouldn't be able to eat her lunch or she'd have to eat it again. And I'm like, ah. Fucking Moko. And then she gets fucking mad shot with that fucking needle gun. Like, and you just, I'm like, oh, God, fucking Moko. Did she just die? Like, ah. Really, like, damn. Because this anime, it could throw shit out at you like that. Because, I mean, it's mad random. They could kill all the fun character if they want to. They could, If they wanted to, they could make this whole shit about Moko. They could legitimately be like, kill this bitch off in the next episode and be like, yo, it's Moko's time. Of course, a lot of people would be angry about that, but still, they could, because it's mad random as shit. It has a, somewhat a story, but it's mad random throughout, like, oh my god. Basically, she gets fucked up. Dude's like, mm, don't worry, she'll be okay. When she wakes up, she'll be free, free of any illnesses. And it's basically, the dude gave her fucking acupuncture. There you go. So she's out cold, but when she wakes up, she'll feel, she'll feel great. And so I'm in, I'm like, okay, he's somewhat a good guy. And then puts the bitch down, take off your clothes. Oh, hell no, fuck that. Grab the bitch's arm so she can't fucking transform. Like, it's go time, bitch. Take off your clothes. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh my god, this fucking episode. Basically, then he gets stabbed with a needle in his fucking hand, and so he's like, okay, no, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to take that bitch off you tomorrow. And we turn, it turns out that that needle came from the professor. That, that mother, her fucking teacher, Nick. Oh my god, this dude. Dude, fucking, yeah! Ah, this dude. It basically, we figure out about the whole nudist beach thing and about how he feels like, you know, she once said, I'm not sure exactly who she is. I'm assuming it's, um, fucking, um, 
her mother. Yeah, that would make the most sense. Because her father died. Yeah, the mother seems like that's who they could be referring to, but I'm not sure. But either way, she said that one day, you know, humans and suits or fucking clothing will be together as one. And I'm like, you know, she believes that instead of the clothing taking over the person. And now that you're thinking about this shit, I'm like, yeah, clothing takes over people. I'm like, I don't know. It was one of those old theories back in the old days, like, if a nigga wore some shit, he'd change person. Like, and it's sort of true today. It really is. Or it could be the whole dress into your personality sort of thing. But either way, I'm enjoying it. We learned about that. He's like, you know, if you get found out that you're doing this, that you're attacking her while she's in this crucial period, you know, in her training, then you do realize that you will be stripped of all your weapons. And this dude's like, fuck it. I'll fight naked. I'll be a naked nudist monk. I'm like, what the... What the fuck is up with this... Oh my god, this dude. Then basically, next day, fucking nigga nude in the morning. Like, yeah. Ugh. Oh my god. Fucking... Ugh. Fucking... I don't care. Let's, let's go back a little bit, though. Because the dinner table... Oh my god. The dinner table, when Mako woke up, and they were, like, eating dinner, and there's all this fucking food. Everybody's just stuffing their face. Like, yeah, yeah. And you just... I want to talk about this real quick, quick. Because this one joke they had. Oh my... It was hilarious. It really was. Basically, Mako, she's fucking, like, talking about how she got all this food because she feels, you know, revitalized. You know, she's not tired or anything, and she just just wants to eat and eat. And, oh, my God. Basically, he's like, yeah, I just went from store to store to store to store, buying up everything I could find, put stores out of business. Like, yeah. And then her father's like, where'd you get all the money? It's like, don't worry, Dad, I put it on your tab. And you just say this nigga turned to stone, like, ah, oh. And then he's like, he just laughs, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we all know what I'll do if I'm in, yeah, if I'm in a bad situation. Makoto's organs, gone. Like, I'm like, oh my god. This, this family is so fucked up. And they're, and throughout the thing, um, throughout the anime, throughout the episode, they're just watching or fucking talk to, you know, Fresh Blood, to, um, fucking, oh my god, I can't remember the nigga's name right now. Anyway, they, they were just watching her talk to the Sue the entire time, and they basically figure that it's her only friend and shit. Oh, my God. They fucking, oh, my God, these people. Because they can't hear it either. And so it's sort of interesting because she's always talking to the Sue, but, you know, they don't hear her talking back, so they assume she's crazy as shit. It's like, yeah, she'd be a good girl. Like, you know, she'd be a good girl, but nah, she, she's a little crazy as fuck that. And then, basically, second day, she powers up. It's a fucking fight. Nigga bought fucking rocket launcher. Yeah, yeah, bitch. Fucking missiles. Like, yeah, blowing shit up. She can now change the size for a scissor. And, of course, throughout the entire, like, throughout this entire episode, I gotta say this. This motherfucker, oh, my God. Fresh blood. Oh, my God. This dude. Oh, my God. The entire time, he's, like, talking about her weight and shit. And she, ah. That was the funniest. Oh, that was that was good. That was really good. But anyway, they're fighting it out. She's like, "Shut the fuck up. I'm doing this right now. We'll talk later." You know, she's you know not really being that nice, like because he's warning her, like, "Hey, something's happening when I'm getting shot." But she she doesn't care, and so she keeps fighting and fighting and fighting. Eventually, after a shitload of fucking traps and explosions, and not to mention this the the leader of the um fucking um music department or whatever I can't remember her name but basically she just sent three fucking different fucking um clubs to go fight this dude and her because you know he's some somewhat of a threat you know he's trying to destroy all these Goku uniforms and take down the fucking student council president you know so she so basically they consider him a threat. And so, three groups come out, and it's basically like these three generals of some, like, Ryo Goose, fuck, I don't care, fucking club. We didn't see, really, them fight at all. Then we got, of course, the gardening club, like, yeah, it's go time, revenge. Like, yeah, you destroyed our fucking garden. Like, yeah. And then, of course, we got the craziest, like, legit, the craziest, oh, we got the 100 fucking poets or some shit from the poem, poetry club. And these niggas, like, oh my god. They're just, like, going, like, yeah, just doing poetry and shit and just shooting, like, waves at these niggas. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, 
basically they all get wiped out though by these niggas traps and they're, they're just dead bodies like everywhere throughout the fucking school while she's trying to find this nigga traps everywhere fucking explosions she basically powers down dragged into the bathroom bitch take off your clothes <gasps> no and then he's about to shoot the bitch in the face basically the suit jumps off her takes a bullet then gets shot down to the ground with these with these fucking needles and then she realizes that the suit was trying to protect her while this dude was like, no, the suit was trying to escape. Look at that. You can't trust him. And the entire time she's like, no. And then in comes Mako randomly with a fucking broom and like puts it between this nigga's ass. Like, yeah. Just pushes this nigga away and he's like, fuck that. And then she goes to this whole spiel about how it's her only friend and shit. Like, I'm like, oh my god. Fucking Mako. Mad random as shit. Like, 100%. Basically, she gets the suit back. She's holding it tight. Dude's like, give me the suit, bitch. Like, Mako, oh, I gotta go clean the bathrooms now. See you later. Like, fucking walks away. Okay, where were we? Oh, yes. Give me the fucking suit, bitch. Like, I'll kill your ass. Like, then basically the suit, through some type of way, like, projected its voice to him and, like, came out like, yeah, just attacking the nigga. Like, you stay away from her, I'll fucking kill you. Like, I'm protecting. Like, yeah, and he realizes what's going on. And so we decide, you know what? I'm gonna save him. I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, fuck with him. Because he realizes that the suit actually, they care for each other. They're friends. It isn't sort of like that whole situation that is, you know, that he assumed. He was way wrong. And then in comes fucking, oh, this fucking head of the music part, my bitch. And the, she's been, like, playing fucking orchestra music throughout the entire fucking fight. I'm like, oh, my God, what the fuck? Like, and she just comes in there like, we can't let you escape. Nigga fucking, like, his suit fucking explodes. And then, throughout the smoke, he escapes, and then there's a bomb, and it blows up, and she's like, oh my god. Well, at least we learned a lot of information. I knew exactly what she'd want. And then we just flash forward to the fucking control room, fucking student house president. Yeah, she really does know what I want. Fucking walks off screen. We got information on this anti-fucking clothing group. Fuck it. And that was the basic episode. Do Oh, wait. There was a little bit more about it, like, after she's, like, waking up and you know, the dude's house, and she's injured, and he's all worn and torn, and it goes through this whole thing about their friends now, and their partners, and basically, you were paid your dad, if the bitch ever goes off a little bit, I'm a killer, peace the fuck out, doom doom, nigga takes off, end credits, doom doom doom, we're done, so it will kill a kill was actually a pretty good episode this week, it was, because, I don't know, it seemed like it went a little bit off track, but it gave us a little bit of background information about exactly what her teacher is, you know, what what he's a part of. And so I'm enjoying that. I really am. But overall, I get this episode right here. With, even with this up and rated system of, you know, it's it's episode 5, so now I gotta go into, like, this whole story aspect. And it diverted a little, but it, uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, it diverted a little, but nonetheless, it was still a good episode. 9 out of 10. Kill a kill this week, good episode. I enjoyed it. I swear to God, when this nigga said about talking about selling his kids' organs, I was like, yes, this, oh, this family, this dude, oh my God. Fuck it. So, with that being said, Smith to my fucking R. Peace the fuck out.